Yes, sir. It's your boy Rico from Street Scores and another one off the checklist. The Washington football team has extended Logan Thomas three more years. I'm so excited. Ron Rivera is finally identifying those core players. Remember, he said he wants to identify those core players when he first got here. And then those would be the type of guys to get long term money. Well, we can clearly see that Jonathan Allen and Logan Thomas are core players. Can't wait to see who else is added to that list. We're going to look at that later. But the main topic today is Logan Thomas. Of course, I'm going to talk about a lot of stats and explain why this was such a great move to make for the Washington football team organization. But before that, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately. And every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one, make sure you go check out my first rookie film session, Jamin Davis coming out with the full class eventually throughout this off season all the way up to the regular season also check out the rest of the channel all of my videos are organized in playlists i even have a comedy playlist for all of my funny videos so again check out the rest of the channel subscribe hit the bell next to the subscription button let's get it So we did it, man. The Washington football team has agreed the terms on a three-year extension for tight end Logan Thomas, the ex-quarterback in college, the ex-Lion in the NFL. And it's crazy, too, because like one of his only good games for the Lions was against us. And I guess that's where we saw some of the potential. And then when Rivera and company came over with Pete Honer, an excellent tight ends coach, the guy that made a lot of this possible, taking that week one Logan Thomas we had and turning him into mid-season Logan Thomas. Us as fans, the Washington organization, and Logan Thomas himself owes Pete Honer a lot of praise. I and mean, Pete Honer has a great track record too. Greg Olson, Vernon Davis, and many others helping with a lot of their developments. And he did it again with Logan Thomas. We struck gold with this one, man. Hopefully, you know what I'm saying, he could do it with John Bates and especially Samus Reyes, but we'll see. This video is about Logan Thomas. And I'm really happy for him, man. This is a great story again. Former QB, even though he was recruited out of high school as a tight end, but then he switched to quarterback in college, then went back to tight end at the NFL level. Didn't look too good, even for us in the beginning. I remember saying during the offseason last year that I like his potential, but, you know, he has work to do. And we saw him put in the work and the transition from week one Logan Thomas to midseason Logan Thomas, it almost looks like two entirely different people from dropping easy open catches to making one hand contested catches while covered and then he can block come on bro a true dual threat tight end not the best blocker doing it but he can hold his own you can leave him out there on the field when we run the ball unlike vernon davis and jordan reed and then unlike jeremy sprinkle he can actually catch and signing a guy like that long term is huge for us because we've been looking for a dual threat tight end for forever remember that was one of jay gruden's biggest complaints about the way our roster was constructed that he didn't have a dual threat tight end he wanted two of them so he could run two tight end sets he could barely even get one in scott turner's first year about halfway through you could finally say that logan thomas was a true dual threat tight end and I'm expecting him to have similar success, if not even more in the future. I'm excited, man. You know how much your playbook opens up when you have a tight end that can both block and be a deadly receiving option? Because again, when he's on the field, you don't know if we're running the ball or passing it. When Vernon Davis and Jordan Reed were on the field, you could pretty much assume we were passing the ball because there was no way we were running it their way because the play was going to get blown up when we tried. And then if Jeremy Sprinkle was on the field, it was almost no way we were throwing it, at least not throwing it to him because he would just drop these super easy open catches consistently now we have a guy that when he's on the field it doesn't immediately tell the defense what we're doing throwing running whatever very ambiguous keeps defenses on their toes they have to play us honest and a balanced defense is the best defense to attack because they're not allocating all of their resources to stop one specific thing like if they know we're running the ball they're going to put eight in the box now it's harder to run the ball but now they have to play us honest every play because you have no idea what is going on in the scott turner offense it's a mix of Scott Turner's genius and also a mix of the versatile talent that we have. And Logan Thomas is spearheading this movement. And also, man, I'm not going to lie. I'm super happy that not only we extended them three years, but when we did it. 
because if he has another season like last year or even better because like i said he wasn't the logan thomas we know now until like in the middle of the season if he comes out week one looking like the Logan Thomas we had towards the end of last season, he's going to have a great year. You could argue he should have made the Pro Bowl over Evan Ingram last year, especially with the fact that he's a better blocker than him and had very similar receiving stats. He's just a better overall tight end already. But then if he's already out there week one, balling out like how he was at the end of last season, he's going to put together a great statistical season this upcoming year. And I'm excited, especially since the situation around him this year is even better because now we've added a lot of weapons around him. So teams will not even be able to focus on Logan Thomas. Even after the great season he had last year, defensive coordinators are not going to be like, we have to stop Logan Thomas at all costs. Like defensive coordinators do with Travis Kelsey with Terry McLaurin, Curtis Samuel, De'Ami Brown, Antonio Gibson, JD McKissick out there. All we did was just add more weapons to this potentially explosive offense. And so you can't focus on stopping Logan Thomas. So he's going to be open a lot all you got to do is just catch the open pass man scott turner is going to design the offense to get you open underneath like he started to do last year quite a bit i'm pretty sure that's going to happen even more often now so i see him getting more touchdowns more catches more yards everything and then on top of that most importantly not even just the weapons around them but the qbs that are going to be throwing to him between fitzpatrick and taylor heineke it's a huge upgrade over alex smith the little bit of kyle allen and the awful Dwayne Haskins from last year. It's a huge upgrade automatically by default because you literally can't get any worse. Even if Ryan Fitzpatrick and Taylor Heineke aren't as good as a lot of us think they are, they're not going to be anywhere near as bad as what we had going on last year. I, it can't. It just can't. I mean, with QBRs outside of the top 32, there's only 32 teams. That means they some of them play worse than backups and then even specifically like ryan fitzpatrick if you go look at mike gusecki's the miami dolphins tight end stats last year two of his three biggest games yardage wise were when fitzpatrick was starting the qb remember ryan fitzpatrick didn't start a lot last year they would just bring ryan fitzpatrick in to basically bail him out occasionally or when Tua just couldn't play so even with the limited times that we saw ryan fitzpatrick last year again two of the three biggest games Mike Gusecki had last year was with Ryan Fitzpatrick starting at quarterback. So I'm excited to see what Logan Thomas is going to get done this year. Because remember, also a very important advanced statistic that a lot of people are overlooking is that Ryan Fitzpatrick had the second quickest snap to throw average time in the NFL last year. So when he snipes the ball and the time it takes for him to throw it, he was the second quickest in the NFL last year. And that means a lot of underneath stuff. And it sounds like Logan Thomas is going to be wide open underneath a lot with Antonio Gibson, JD McKissick, even running routes out of the backfield. And then Terry McLaurin, Curtis Samuel, and De'Ami Brown on the outsides, just taking the lid off of the defense and opening things up. It's going to be crazy, man. Man, an era of Washington football where we're rewarding our own good players we're keeping our core players not just bringing in random free agents from the outside and signing them to unnecessary contracts the guys that are putting in work you could almost say kind of homegrown even though he's only been here for a year the logan thomas we have now is not the same logan thomas we had when we first signed him and then jonathan allen like i mean who's next and that's what's so interesting because we just signed jonathan allen long term fantastic sign just signed logan thomas long term another fantastic signing but if you look at the list we have a lot of unrestricted free agents this upcoming offseason i mean it looks like the majority of the team is about to be gone brandon share i'm pretty sure he's gone though we're not i hope we trade him because at the very worst if we just let him walk we can get a third round compensatory pick so we can at least get a second round out of somebody that would be great but then even your projected starting quarterback, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Charles Leno, your projected starting left tackle, John Bostic. Hopefully he's a depth piece, but he's been starting at Mike Linebacker and getting more snaps than anybody else at Linebacker for us last year. Then your starting kicker, Dustin Hopkins, Cam Sims, one of the very few locks in this receiving group and expected to have a breakout year with all of these other receivers around him, taking all of the defense's attention then you're starting left tackle from last year and maybe starting right tackle early on this year Cornelius Lucas then one of the players that saved our season last year running back JD McKissick also Daryl Roberts really versatile piece Peyton Barber your go-to we just need one yard goal line third and one whatever get it done 
Bobby McCain, your projected starting free safety. Also a pretty good slot corner as well. Adam Humphreys, potentially a starting slot. Lamar Miller, Jared Norris, David Sharp, Tyler Larson, Danny Johnson, Ricky Seals Jones, David Mayo, probably our best just pure run stopping linebacker deandre carter maybe our best returner on roster right now i mean the list goes on and on and on it's so many players jeremy Reese is a restricted free agent after this season tim settle is an unrestricted free agent it's crazy to even tim settle's contract is already up now and even you know the crowd favorite steven sims he'll be a restricted free agent after this year so we got to see who's next i mean is deron Payne next to get that long-term extension you know terry mcclorn we went from defense to offense so we're going to stay on offense and sign a second offensive player in a row give terry that big time money we'll see there's no rush to get terry done yet but it would be nice if we can go ahead and get it out the way also deron Payne as well because we already picked up his fifth year option so he's at least playing through 2022 same with terry mcclone and man before we get out of here i just wanted to read you some of logan thomas's stats from last year you know we dove straight into all of the analytical stuff this video i didn't even really give y'all stats on them. logan thomas caught a career high 72 passes in 2020 which was third amongst all tight ends in the NFL. And he also has 670 yards receiving. He also just recently, a few weeks ago, participated in that tight ends camp with all of the top tight ends in the NFL. Greg Olson, Travis Kelsey, George Kittle, I mean all of them. And his 670 yards receiving was seventh. And then he had six touchdown receptions. And before last season, his career best was 16 catches and 173 yards in a season. I mean, that was really a breakout season last year. And I think he's going to have another breakout because he's going to do even better this year. P. Honer doesn't think he's one of the top six or seven tight ends in the NFL for no reason. And I definitely feel like he's going to go prove it this year. But again, what he did last year was already amazing. First of all, Logan Thomas had the most receptions amongst all tight ends in the nfl as a pure slot guy logan thomas was number one with 48 mike gusecki was 35 so ryan fitzpatrick is going from the tight end with the second most receptions out of the slot last season to the first so ryan fitzpatrick is right at home as well easy transition and then also remember when pro football focus put out their most valuable 2020 additions by position article their war metrics which basically looks at how bad a position was for a team in 2019 and then how much better it got by a certain addition whether it be through the draft or free agency any type of change after the 2020 season and they did this for the entire nfl and only chose one player per position chase young made the biggest difference out of any edge rusher in the nfl last year and logan thomas made the biggest difference from what a team had in 2019 to what they had in 2020 at tight end in the nfl that's huge praise right there huge but yeah man that's the end of this video please get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video please like this video if you liked it if you learned anything i know you learned something so you're legally bonded to like this video before you leave this video much appreciated and as always man i appreciate all of the support man shouts out to everybody that donates to the channel big shouts out to all of my sponsors especially my pro bowl sponsors who names you see scrolling on the screen right now and a special shouts out to my one all pro sponsor Jaden. again i really appreciate all y'all man i'll catch y'all later i'm out